So now let me go into details of how the compiler is going to produce code, how the compiler is going to uh, decide where each each variable gets stored. Okay, so let's take an example of a C program. When I start the program, right, let's say that the first thing I do is I define a whole bunch of variables, right? So I define integers A, B, C. I define an array of values stored in D, so it's an array of size 10, and, and so on. Okay, so once the compiler sees this, it says, all right, you know, looks like you're dealing with all these, these different variables. Let me create a memory location for each of you. Okay, so the compiler is going to work with what is known as virtual memory or the virtual address space, okay, which is a very large and contiguous region of memory that the compiler and the program thinks it has access to. Okay, we'll talk much more uh, about virtual memory and physical memory uh, later in class. Okay, but for now, let's assume that every compiler thinks that it has access to a large amount of memory, you know, that goes up to, say, you know, 64 gigabytes. And the address starts at zero and then, you know, grows all the way to 64 gigabytes. So that initial address is referred to as the base address. Okay, and all variables that you defined are given some space with an offset relative to that base address. So let me explain this a little further. So when you define variables A, B, C, the compiler says, all right, looks like you want a four byte entity re being referred to as A. Okay, so I'll give it the very first four bytes over here. And it keeps a table saying that uh, you just defined variable A. All right, and it's going to start at offset zero from the base address. Then you define variable B. So next you allocate variable B and B now has to start at byte number four. Okay, because A is occupying the first four bytes, right? Because everything is a 32-bit entity. So then B has to start at the fourth byte. So you put it, so the compiler puts this into the table saying that variable B begins at an offset four. That means it's, it's four bytes away from the base address. Then you define variable C, which, you know, starts over here. And so C is defined to start at an address, which is eight bytes away from the base address. And then it says that, you know, D, array D starts at 12, right? So D is going to start over here. That's D0, then there's D1, D2, and so on, right? So the next 40 bytes kind of gets reserved for array D. Okay, so the compiler produces all of this code over here. And it knows exactly where this code is being placed. Okay, so if I, after I declare all these variables, if I write a line of C code that says A equals B plus C, it's actually a lot more complicated than what I showed you in my early examples. We know that we can do an add operation only on registers. Currently, you know, B and C and A are all sitting in memory. So before I can do an add operation, those values have to be fetched from memory into registers. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is I'll load B into a register. So I'll produce an instruction that says load word Okay, and I want to put it into a register. I'm going to put it into $S0. Okay, so now this is a register that's going to refer to the value of variable B. Since it refers to a variable in the high-level program, I'm going to use a register S0, not T0. Okay, so I'm going to load it into S0. And then I'm going to produce an address, which is essentially four away from the base address. Okay, so let's assume that the base address is, has somehow been stored beforehand into register T0, right? So T0, let's say, has my base address. Okay, so I'm going to access register T0, but I need to actually access a location that is four bytes away from this base address. So I express that in this way, saying that I need to get the base address in T0. If I add four to it, it produces an address which is which corresponds to this location over here, which is where B is sitting in memory. Okay, so once I've produced that address, I'm going to go into memory, get the value sitting in that address, and then bring it and place it into register S0. I'll do the same thing for variable C. I'm going to use a different register S1. Again, since this is a register that corresponds to an actual variable in, in my C program, I'm using a register S1. And then I produce its address, which is nothing but the base address plus eight, right? And the compiler produces this by looking up this table over here. 
which tells it exactly how far every single variable is from the base address. Having done this, I can now do an add operation. I add S0 and S1 and I write the result into a new location S2. And this is essentially going to have the value of variable A, right? And so since this register corresponds to a variable A, I'm using the term S. Having done this, I'm going to write this result back into um, back into location A, right? So I now do a store word which says that take the value in S2 and write it into a memory location, which is essentially the base address plus zero, right? Because A is at, uh, is at an offset of zero from the base address. Okay, so the store is one of the few instructions where the first operand is actually the source operand, right? Because uh, a store instruction really does not write anything into a register. So it does not have a destination register. So this is, its, is, a, is a source or input register. And this is also a source or an input register. Next, I'm going to explain a different kind of instruction. So until now, the only instruction I had introduced was of this kind, right? A add dollar s not dollar s1 dollar s2 right where you have three register input operands you can also have special instructions which are immediate instructions which take this form over here okay in, in this case one of the register operands is replaced with an actual constant value that I'm, that that I'm producing as part of the program right so this value is not sitting in in some register it's a value that the compiler knows beforehand and is encoding into the instruction itself. So if your program has a constant value, you essentially put that constant value into a register and then you continue doing normal math from that point on, right? So how do I put a constant value into a register, right? The only option I have is to use an instruction like this that has one register input operand and one constant value as input, right? So if I'm, if I'm trying to put the value 1000 into a register, this is the instruction I'll produce. I'll take 1000 it has to be added to some register value, right? So uh, most architectures will provide a special register that is always hardwired to the value zero. So dollar zero is a register that's always zero. So I'm essentially adding my constant value thousand to register zero shown over here, and then writing the result into register S zero. Okay, so this is how you would put a constant value into a register. Unfortunately, there's no easier way to do it because I have to use one of these two kinds of instructions, either an instruction that has three register operands or an instruction that has two register operands and one constant or immediate value.